You know, I make the best pancakes in the Northwoods. Pancake in my life. It is so terrible. Mmm. Gooey just the way I like them. in life. I'm going to the top. I'm excited.
obstacles. I'm telling you, it's tough. You gotta dig in. You just gotta push through the barriers. Yeah, it's worth it. wife of mine, I just don't understand her. Sure, I don't have time anymore. Where would I get the time? She doesn't understand. I mean, I got house payments, I got car payments, I got old college debts, I got credit cards. I got her one of the finest homes in the entire county, filled it with elaborate furnishings. Got her that fancy, beautiful, brand new car. Complaining, complaining. Complaining I don't talk with her like I used to. I just want to get on with life and, and make her happy and make me happy. We don't communicate like we used to. We don't enjoy each other. Well, how can I? I mean, I'm making it in the world. She ought to be proud of me. What's with her anyways? I just don't get her. I just don't understand her. Kids are getting on my nerves. Why don't they do what I ask them to do? Yeah, I know I should take some more time with them and talk with them and play with them. <laughs> Can you imagine? They want me to play trucky with them in the sandbox. They want me to take out time to play in a sandbox? Don't they know I'm an important person? I gotta get on with life. I'm nearing the summit of my career. The kids will just have to wait. It's just the way it is. Life is tough, you know. This is crazy. I thought I'd be happy. I'm miserable. There's got to be a better way. That was me. I was at the end of my rope. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been out on a limb? I have. Sometimes it seems like we're just out of control. Sometimes it feels like we're just going to crash. It was one endless treadmill. Have you been on it? I was. I start out the day, I'd be running about like this. By noon, I was going full speed. By the evening when I went home, it was full exhaustion all the way out. I was stressed, pushed, exhausted. I fell in love with my wife. I didn't know my own children. But now, I have a better way of life. Thank you.
what happened? I downsized. I went from the largest home I've ever owned on 40 park-like acres to the smallest home I've ever owned. I left all those vehicles behind and went down to one vehicle. I simplified my life. I brought my life down to the irreducible minimum. I'd slow down. I learned how to say no gracefully. I reprioritized my entire life and something wonderful happened. Friends, I found time. Time to think. Time to reflect. I didn't know I was in trouble. I was in charge. I made the decisions. I decided what I wanted to do, what I wanted to think, what I wanted to see. I decided what I wanted to accomplish. I came to the greatest pivotal decision in my entire life letting God be in charge of Jim Oenberger entirely, completely. Let him have all of me. I learned how to walk with God. I'm still learning how to walk with God throughout my entire day, all day long. It transformed my life. No, it, it is transforming my life. It has revitalized my marriage. I've got the greatest marriage in America today. It's reconnected my family. We're a real family now. You don't see families anymore. We're tight today. Yes, this happened when I had my children, but my boys are grown and married and have their own families now. We formed a family unit that's almost unseen in today's society. And it's simple, very simple. In the beginning, God. He was, He is, and He's always present with you and with me. I make God's Word my blueprint for life, and His Spirit my guide throughout my entire day. And God's Spirit is still moving upon man's heart today. Just the same as in Genesis where God spoke and it was, God can speak and you can hear Him, you can sense His presence with Him, and He'll guide you. It's nothing audible, but He speaks to the quiet recesses of your mind, your heart, your conscience. You can't hide from God. You can't run from God. He's always there and present for you. Let me illustrate. You know, God is real. He's always with you. He never leaves you, never forsakes you. He wants to be your helper wherever you are. I want to talk to you about an episode that I had in my life a number of years ago. I was out cutting firewood by myself and come into an area that was, I was sitting up on a bench and it was about 25 feet in the air and a beautiful lodgepole tree had fallen in a storm and had wedged between a couple of trees and was arched like a bow and arrow and was just waiting for someone to come and release all that energy and that someone was me. Now God's always with you brothers and sisters. He never leaves, He doesn't forsake you. When I was there, and I was cutting through that tree with my chainsaw, and I was going through little rounds of wood, just like I have here, 16 inches of rounds of wood. My trailer was right behind me, and I would just kick that round of wood down off that cliff and roll down to the trailer. And I'd go to the next section, and I'd kick that piece down. And I'd go to the next section and kiss that, kick that piece down. And when I got to the piece that was being held by that tree, a still small voice said to me, Jim, go to the other side of the tree. And I thought for a while, I don't want to go to the other side of the tree. I mean, I like this. It's working. Everything's flowing good. No, I'm not going to. That's the problem with Jim Holmberger. Jim Holmberger is in charge. He knows what's best. My human reasoning was in charge. But I had come at that point in my, my walk with God to understand that God whispers in the still small recesses of our conscience. Nothing you can hear, it's not audible, but quietly you've had the experience. Maybe you haven't recognized it as God speaking to you, 
but it is God speaking to you. And I thought to myself, no, I don't want to. And I went back and I started cutting again. And again, that, that uh, impression came to my mind. Again, nothing that you hear, just in the quiet recesses of your mind. And I said, Lord, is that you? And the Lord says, yes, Jim, go to the other side of the tree. Now the problem that I have is that I like to run my own show. There's a bumper sticker out there. I saw it when I was in Greenville, Tennessee. And I dislike this bumper sticker. I don't know if any of you have ever seen it. And the bumper sticker reads, God is my co-pilot. I hate that bumper sticker. I mean, I hate that bumper sticker. It's against everything I stand for now in my life. That used to be Jim Homer, that no longer is. Why do I dislike that bumper sticker? It's because if God is the co-pilot, would you tell me who the pilot is? Me. And when I'm the pilot and I put God over in the co-pilot position, I have a problem. I'm headed for trouble. And when I was out cutting that wood, God was there with me. He loves us. Doesn't matter how big a sinner you are, how many sins you've committed, doesn't matter how many things you've done wrong, you cannot exclude God's love and His presence from you. He's there for you always. The Holy Word says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the left or when you turn to the right, what it's saying is God is there with you. And so I recognized that. And I said, Lord, yes, I'll go to the other side of the tree. So I moved to the other side of the tree, finished my cut. As soon as I finished that cut, that tree flung out. And all that energy that was pepped up and, and being held in that tree was released. And as I stood there and I watched that tree, I could actually see what would have happened to me. I could actually feel the tree having hit me about knee level, me flying over that 25-foot cliff, with the chainsaw in my hand, landing on my back, and who knows doing what, breaking my neck, whatever, then I would have ended up in the hospital and said, Lord, where were you? God is with you. He wants to save you from all your problems. He wants to guide you. We're told in His Word that we are saved by grace, through faith, and not of yourself, it's a gift of God. I never understood what that meant before. I didn't understand that Jim Holmberger needed to be saved every moment of every hour of every day. In fact, I need to be saved every time I open my mouth. And God is there. His grace comes in. I was once told that grace is unmerited favor. Well, that's the beginning, maybe. His grace is His unmerited presence with us, where He stands by our side all day long, taps us on the shoulder, and says, Jim, go to the other side of the tree. That's His grace. It's His presence with me throughout my day all day long, wanting to guide me, to direct me, to give me wisdom, to empower me, to save me from myself. And when we learn how to understand how God walks with us, how He taps us on the shoulder, then we can respond to Him through faith. Now faith is not just a belief in God's Word. The devils believe and tremble. It's more than just believing in the Word or, or going to a church or believing in a theology. Faith, real saving faith, uh, accepts God's Word as the blueprint for your life, it then surrenders its choice, my choice, my decision that God gave me with, and He made me a free moral agent to choose Him or not choose Him any hour of the day. Faith surrenders that choice that God has given me to do what He suggests rather than what my human reason wants to do. It not only surrenders that choice to God, but it depends upon God for the action that is to follow. And it works by love. I don't do this to merit anything. 
I do this because I know that God knows what's best for me. I love him because what he has done for me. So in, when I was out cutting the wood, he needed to save me. I was headed for trouble. Don't you want that kind of a God? I want that kind of a God. Who would ever reject that kind of a God? And his grace was there. His presence was there, whispering in my mirror, tapping me on the shoulder, so to speak, speaking to my conscience, whatever way you want to phrase it, to say, Jim, go to the other side of the tree. My part is to recognize his presence with me. Nothing audible, nothing visual, but just recognize his still small voice and then surrender my ability to decide, my being the pilot, and put myself in the co-pilot's position, allow God in the pilot's position, and say, yes, Lord, and go to the other side of the tree. That's faith. That's a faith that works. So we're saved by grace through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift, it says. Well, what do you mean it's a gift? All of us receive, or most all of us receive, gifts at Christmas time. Now, what would you think of me if someone that loved me gave me a lovely gift and it's all wrapped in a nice little box, a beautiful uh, bow on the top, and I take that gift and I stick it up in the closet and I let it sit there. Does that gift do me any good? Not in the least. For a gift to be valuable, you've got to open it. And we're told that this is a gift of God. The opening it is our choice. I can, I can choose to go with this gift that God has given me, which is his presence to empower me and guide me and direct me and give me wisdom, or I can reject the gift. So I choose to open that gift every day, every moment throughout the day, as often as God brings it to me. And guess what? My life is better. <laughs> it's much better when God runs it and guides it than when I do. In fact, one of the areas of my life that is so much better in is my marriage. When I've learned how to open that gift of His grace, walking with God throughout the day, recognizing His presence, listening for His still small voice, He has absolutely, utterly revitalized my marriage. It's wonderful. Let me tell you about it. Let me, let me tell you how it works so it can work for you. When you become familiar with the principles in his word and you understand the, the manner in which he speaks to you personally through your heart and conscience, life gets exciting. Things change. Let me tell you how it revitalized my marriage. You'll like it. You know, I no longer love my wife. When I first dated her, I loved my wife. Then after a while, we got busy, we got going into the world, and I started treating her like a convenience. And sad to say, sometimes, I'm not happy to say it either, I treated her like dirt. But you know, when I discovered how to walk with God, how to live by His principles, and how to listen to His Spirit guide me through the day, now I'm in love with my wife. She's my queen. And it isn't, co it isn't complicated, brothers and sisters. It is beautiful. It's wonderful. In fact, let me share with you how it can change any marriage, how it can change any relationship, no matter what. I was out in the garage one day, and I was... I was uh, sharpening my chainsaw, putting some gas and oil into it, getting it all fixed up, and I got my hands all dirty and grimed. And I was having a wonderful day with the Lord. I walked into the back of our log cabin. And I'm in the bathroom, about 11 o'clock during the day. I'm bent over in the sink, and I've got the water running, and i got my hands all full suds. And I'm bent over, my wife comes walking into the bathroom doorway, and she's a bright, amiable young lady, and she looks at me, she says, What you doing, dear? 
And just then is the struggle. Will I live by principle? And will I allow God's word to speak to my ear at that point? And will I allow the Holy Spirit to guide me? Or will I let my flesh come up, my old way? You should know something about me. I'm a full-blooded German. My mother was Wolfgram. My father, Hohenberger. Full German. There's a Hitler that lies down inside of Jim Hohenberger. And God wants to bring a uh, Luther out of me, develop a Luther in me. And now I have a choice. I understand what God's principle says. And the Holy Spirit's speaking into my ear right now. If you take a look in the Old Testament, it has a statement saying, And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when you turn to the left and when you turn to the right. And right now I've got Hitler speaking to me, and I've got Luther speaking to me. But the Bible all says, Choose ye this day whom you will serve. And so as I'm bent over and I'm washing my hands, my wife says that lovely statement, What you doing, dear? The Lord is speaking into my ear, saying, Treat her gently, Jim. And I pause for a moment. All this goes on in just a split second. But I'm determined by, to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God and to allow His Spirit to guide me every day. And His principles were there, and His Spirit was there. And God made me a free moral agent. And He empowers me by His grace to choose the right thing. And so I looked up from washing my hands and I said, washing my hands, dear. And she says, oh, I just wanted to know how your day was going. No, you'll notice something. Our wives are different than us. In fact, I married Sally because she was different than me. She looked different than me. She smelled different than me. She thought different than me. I liked that. But for some reason, after we got married, I wanted her to think just like me, talk just like me, and reason just like me. And it was a new day when I came to understand that she never will, and it's okay. It's okay. And that I can turn every thought and every word over to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in my day. That's walking with God. Now what's happening in your life? Maybe you're not German. Maybe you're Spanish and you got a Castro in you. Maybe you're, you're over in the Middle East and you got a Saddam Hussein in you or an Osama bin Laden. Doesn't matter the nationality. I pick on my nationality, but you pick on your nationality. And it's really not a nationality. It's our inherent flesh we're born with. And God has come to teach us to walk above that. All of us can. Now I want you to pause with me just for a moment. What if I would have chosen the flesh? how different the whole scenario would have been. Let's go back. And remember, I was washing my hands. I, I, was, I was bent over in the sink. And again, the water was running. And I had my hands all lathered up. My lovely wife comes in the doorway and says, What you doing, dear? And right at that moment, the flesh was speaking to me. That Hitler was saying, let her have it. So what would have happened if I would have, if I would have lifted my head and said, That's a stupid question. I mean, can't you see I'm washing my hands? What do you think the response of my wife would be? Her countenance would have dropped. Sadness would have come into her face. That is a stupid question. Why do you ask me such things? Can't you see I'm washing my hands? Well, I was just wondering how your day was going. She'd been hurt. She'd been wounded. And with a dropped shoulders and a lowered countenance, she would have walked away. The day is ruined. Which one do you want to choose? Do you want your relationships, whether you're married or single? How do you want your relationships to go? Do you want God to revitalize them? He can when you learn how to turn over your life to Him and walk with Him throughout your entire day. It's wonderful, simply wonderful.
You know, I've come to the understanding, I didn't always have it, but I've come to the understanding that life either revolves around me or it revolves around God. Which one is it? Let me illustrate to you if I can. You know, when I was in the world, and the way I was raised too, I did what I wanted to do, and I became what I wanted to become, and I made all my own decisions. Life revolved around me. If I put in this circle here, something in the circle, this rock here represents me. And then I did what I wanted to do. If uh, what employment I wanted, I decided. That was my employment. What kind of social life I wanted, hey, whatever goes. If I want to go out drinking or dancing or, or hunting or fishing or, or uh, whatever, skiing, I just do it. I don't consult anybody. I make my decisions and I do it. That represents my recreation. My education maybe is over here. The expectations of others are over here. You can put anything in this circle that you want. Decisions you, maybe let's say this, this larger rock, let's say that represents God. I was told who God was in my early years, so uh, he was there though. He was on the outside of the circle on the peripheral. And um, uh, that's God, maybe this is the church. And you can put anything in your circle that you want. And everything that I wanted to do, I filtered through me. I was the final source. I was in charge. And I didn't know any better, so I'm not downing that. That's the way I came up. But there came a point in my life that this circle and all the things in its peripheral weren't working for me. And uh, I got very stressed, very pushed, very frustrated. And I came to the point of understanding in this process that I had to take me out of the circle and I went on the peripheral and I put God in the circle. Now, every decision that I made from that point on, and I still make, I filter through God. I'm no longer in charge. It's because his wisdom is far reaching. I can't see into the future. Uh, he knows everything, I don't. And so now my circle has changed. And let me tell you, I'm much happier. I thought I'd be miserable if I couldn't decide, you know, what kind of recreation or sports or what I was going to do with the expectations of others or my social life or what I did at the church or just me, whatever I wanted to do, when I wanted to do, what TV program I wanted to watch. I thought I'd be miserable, but that's the play of the devil. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm the happiest man in the world because I'm free. I'm free because... I know that God knows everything, and now I filter absolutely everything through God. Now, some people's circles, they have God out here, and they recognize God, and maybe they go to church one hour a week, or maybe twice, or, and me is in the middle. But something happens to them. My father called this foxhole Christians. My father was in World War II. He landed on Normandy Beach. And my father told me the story. And he says, son, I want to tell you, there's no atheists in foxholes. And I said, what do you mean, son? And my father said, you know, when the big guns are shooting at the ships and you come ashore, you know you need God. Everything else, your whole peripheral is gone. You need God. When you go in that foxhole, and shrapnel's flying, and they're shooting at you, and the big guns are going off. There's no retreat. You need God. And a lot of people come to the point of getting into a foxhole. And that foxhole might represent your health. It might represent a financial crisis. It might represent a, a separation, divorce in your marriage, or, or friends betraying you, or your business gone sour, or some expectation that's not delivered. And so temporarily, it switches, and you put God back in the center here. But as soon as the crisis is over, God has acted on your behalf on the sidelines, you start thinking, well, maybe I acted rationally. <laughs> and you pull God back out here, and guess who ends up 
in the center. Well, I don't want to be a foxhole follower after God. I want to make a permanent switch. I did that 20 years ago, and today my life is wonderful. My wife is my queen. We are in love again. My family's together. It's tight. It's a real family. You're either going to be courageous or you're going to be foolish. It takes courage to give everything to God. Your life, your hopes, your plans, your aspirations. To follow as God leads, to make His will your own. But all it takes is foolishness to go the way alone. I know what you're thinking. There's something in your life that you're wrestling with that you just can't trust God with, that you just can't seem to give over to Him. I was in the same position. Let me share with you what God shared with me. He came to me, he says, Jim, you're just like a man that's got an old 1949 beat up pickup truck, all rusted out, barely runs, smokes when it goes down the road. I want to give you a brand new Toyota Land Cruiser. And you're looking at what you have to give up instead of looking at what you're going to receive. Jim, get your eyes off from what you're giving up and get your eyes on that which I want to give to you. Put your eyes higher. Focus to what God's going to bring to you. That's the key. Many people wonder whether this will work for them or not. And they also wonder how soon it'll work for them. The answer to that is as soon as you begin to respond to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you, God's there right now speaking to you. Will you respond to him? I was doing a weekend seminar and I was sitting up in the um, front of the church and this lovely elderly lady comes up to me, Johanna was her name, 79 years old. She's all excited. She comes up and she sits right down next to me. She puts her hand right on my leg. She says, Mr. Holmberger, Mr. Holmberger, I got to tell you something. I'm so excited. And I said, well, Johanna, what is it? And she said, Mr. Holmberger, she says, I was leaving to come to the meeting this morning. My husband said I wasn't going to, he wasn't going to come. And she said, when I got to the door, I heard the Lord say to me, Johanna, hug and kiss your husband goodbye. And she says, I stopped right there and she says, I will not hug and kiss my husband goodbye. He hasn't hugged and kissed me in five years. He needs to be the pursuer, not me. That's his responsibility. And then she says, I remembered that you had said during the weekend that it's very simple, that all I have to do is say yes to God and no to self. 
And she says, I contemplated it, Ben. And I said, yes to God and no to self. She says, I walked over and I, I looked at my husband and I said, honey, can I hug and kiss you goodbye? And she said he, he got very quiet and he, he got a tear in his eye. And he looked at me and he said, I didn't think you loved me anymore. I didn't think you wanted to hug and kiss me anymore, Johanna. She said, we weeped and we cried and we hugged and we kissed. And she says, we made a, a definite determination right then and there that we would listen to that still small voice and follow it. And it changed their marriage at 79 and 83. If that couple at that age can have their marriage changed that quickly, the very weekend, the very, as soon as they responded, so can you. It's just that simple. Those hash browns now. I like this. This is good. Get ourselves a nice fire.
That's just good. <laughs> Typical question that I get from people, do I have to move to a faraway place like the mountains to find this deeper experience and walk with God? And the answer is very simple. Where you are, God is. God can reach you wherever you're at, whether you're in New York or the uh, northern part of Maine, whether you're in Chicago or the cornfields of Iowa, whether you're in Denver or the deserts of Arizona, whether you're in Miami or the mountains of Montana, God is there. He's there for you. Where you are, God is. And God will find you. And he'll speak to you. You don't have to move to some far different, distant place. You just have to be available to him now. You have to be willing to follow whatever he brings to your consciousness. My boys love camping. I mean, any kind of camping. Backpacking, canoe camping, driving camping, and their favorite part of camping is the campfire at night. They'll get logs and come around. They'll get themselves little sticks like this and rearrange the fire as all boys do. Then they'll get look at their father and they'll say, Father, tell us a story when you were growing up, about our age. They love stories. I couldn't tell them enough. I'd like to tell you a story tonight, a story that my father told me about an ice house. This takes me back to the 50s when I was a young boy. I was driving in town with my father. We are going to buy a couple blocks of ice. We had an ice box in our house, and uh, it took two blocks of ice to keep it cool for the entire week. We'd go in town once a week and buy those blocks of ice, and as we were driving in, my father said to me, he said, son, you know, grandfather didn't buy his ice. Grandfather would wait until it got real cold in the winter. He'd go out to the lake and they'd carve out these blocks of ice, haul them to their home site, and there they had an ice house. The ice house was usually set into a, a little bank and uh, it had a big, thick door, no windows. If you go in, into an ice house, it has two things in it. It's got, of course, the blocks of ice 
and sawdust. Because if you put one block of ice on top of another block of ice, they freeze together. So they cover the ice blocks with sawdust. My grandfather was in the ice house one day, and when he came out, he noticed he lost his pocket watch. In those days, they didn't have wrist watches like we do. They had pocket watches. They usually have a vest, and they were uh, with a little uh, chain on it with the pocket watch. So when he came out of the ice house and he noticed that, he went back in. It was a valuable pocket watch, and he looked all over the ice house, but he couldn't find it. He came out, and the neighbor man was there and was telling him about it, and both of them went back into the ice house and searched frantically to no avail. They came outside and they were sitting outside talking about it and a neighbor boy had overheard them talking. He slipped into the ice house, a few minutes he comes out, stood in front of my grandfather with his pocket watch. My grandfather says, how did you find it? And he says, well I went in the ice house and grandfather says, yes. He says, I closed the door and grandfather says, yes. He says, and then I laid down and grandfather says, yes. And then he said, I listened. You see, friends, the watch is always ticking. God is there for you. You can sense this still small voice speaking to you. And if you respond, he'll empower you. He'll revitalize your marriage. He will reconnect your family because God is there for you. Greetings. I would like to encourage you, if living on the edge has touched your heart, if you'd like to have a closer walk with your God, to read the book Escape to God. It will take you through our journey of removing life's draining distractions and teach you to cultivate an intimate relationship with your Creator. Regardless of your circumstances, no matter where you live, Escape to God will connect you with a God that is loving and caring and is there for you.